Hello everyone, hope you're doing all right, hope you're keeping safe, hope you're keeping sane. Um, this video is a response to a comment I received on one of my most recent videos regards a husband who has a gambling problem and has accrued a substantial amount of debt off the back of their gambling addiction. Um, my apologies to the person who put this comment on uh, in, if you didn't want me to sort of respond to it in this way. Uh, I wanted to respond to you properly um, because I think it actually it's a very important topic and my response to you hopefully might help anyone who's watching this who is the spouse, partner, husband, wife, girlfriend um, and possibly like family or close friends of someone who has a gambling addiction and was immediately impacted by their addiction. So I'll probably paraphrase your comment if that's okay and then obviously I can respond to it and, and tell you what I believe um, you know, not not what I believe you should do, but give you my reaction to it. So, um, this person comments and says, "I found out that my husband took so many credit cards and loans to for sports betting, uh, put themselves a hundred and ten thousand in debt." Uh, it's unclear as to what currency that is, but I, I get the feeling that doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, it isn't the first time, and there's no way they can pay the money back. It's turned their lives upside down, and they don't. And uh, this, this commenter says they don't feel like they've got a future anymore. Um, they had been checking the accounts regularly, which is yeah, absolutely what you should be doing, uh, and thought that he was on the right track. So, you know, to paraphrase again, kind of trusted them a bit more, uh, but most recently checked the accounts, and over the last six months they've they've raised this hundred plus thousand debt. And like I say, that could be something. Um, obviously, we work. I work in pounds. That could be a hundred thousand pounds. It could be a hundred thousand. Uh, sec or whatever which is what ten thousand pounds but it doesn't matter because the the principle is the same um it's unaffordable to them and also i think the biggest issue of course with this is is the trust issue that you know the, the the financial repercussions the financial fallout whilst is the problem that i guess you now have to address and now have to deal with is not the most significant problem in terms of this the whole scenario uh and if we look at the problem as a, as a sort of larger thing if we look at the trust issue first of all yes uh, trust is something that is very very easily and very commonly damaged through an addiction uh, i think from an addict's perspective you you lose trust and of course you can attempt to rebuild that trust uh, i will speak from my own personal perspective uh, my wife when she found out about my gambling was absolutely devastated uh, not so much about damage that I'd caused us, because thankfully it didn't cause us any major significant financial issues as, as a sort of a married couple, but because I'd broken our, our trust, I hadn't spoken to her about it, and, and whilst I hadn't necessarily lied about anything in particular, I'd lied substantially and consistently in order to cover up this addiction. The, the, the hardest thing for for me, and I am in no way um, sort of expecting any kind of sympathy or pity with regards to this, but just to speak from my perspective, the hardest thing for me was for her telling me that she felt stupid or foolish in herself because she hadn't identified my problem because I had managed to keep it from her. She felt like she was somehow to blame for this because she should have been looking out for me, so to speak. And from that perspective, I would say you should never, as the partner or spouse or husband, wife, whatever, of a gambling addict, blame yourself in any capacity. Us as gamblers, are we're inherently good liars. We, um, we develop a perpetuation of, of lying. We develop this knack of lying and this compulsion to lie at every given opportunity. I spoke about it in a recent video where I actually still find it hard to tell the truth um, when asked certain questions. If my wife says, oh, where have you been? Uh, I will, my the, the subconscious part of my gambling brain, which still exists, will want to come out and lie and tell her that I've been somewhere I haven't, even if there is absolutely nothing wrong with where I have actually been. It becomes a compulsion. Lying becomes as addictive as the gambling itself, and you should never, ever blame yourself for believing the lies that your partner or your significant other or whatever family member has told you in the cycle of a gambling addiction because, A, we become very good at it 
and also because it's not your responsibility you know to question the behaviors of, of those around you if you believe someone and you take their word as gospel and you have trust and you know faith in in someone's word then that is not your problem that is a positive attribute that you can believe someone and you can trust someone and you put faith in someone that you love and you care about if you don't then that is actually more of a problem uh, once someone has proven themselves to be dishonest then you have absolutely every right to disbelieve everything they tell you when i broke that trust with my wife i did not for one second you know, as much as it it, it, it made me cross sometimes, and, and sometimes I I really hated the fact that she would cross-examine me at basically every given opportunity because, you know, but that's because she didn't trust me and she couldn't trust me. You know, whilst that was actually in the early stages of my current recovery where I have been free of gambling, it was not unreasonable for her to question every, my every action, you know, what I was spending my money on, where I was going. And I had to be open and honest and as, as horrible as it was and it is horrible from the other side because you feel like you're being treated like a child and you're being questioned like a child and you're not able to be trusted but we're not able to be trusted and this doesn't mean in honest or honesty it doesn't mean that we're untrustworthy as people as a whole i actually have always considered myself a, a very open and very honest person i think this channel is probably testament to that but when it came to gambling i couldn't be trusted because of the addiction and i'm not saying that because that absolves me as of any responsibility you know um and I, I think i said this in one of my recent videos I, I was a liar i was a compulsive liar and it was the addiction that was making me lie and whilst it might be the fault of the addiction it was my responsibility to not lie i can't say oh well i'm a gambling addict therefore i didn't know right from wrong i absolutely knew right from wrong I, and I absolutely it was absolutely my responsibility to take whatever steps were required to protect those around me and this is the next point i want to come on to which is protection i don't know about the financial situation that you're in i don't know if that's recoverable i don't know how your finances are laid out but what i would say is you need to protect you you know um you know your your husband might or partner whatever might have absolute best intentions you know what maybe they will this time maybe they will sort their addiction out they'll get into recovery and they'll stick with it and they'll improve their life but for now what you need to do is protect yourself your partner's recovery your partner's addiction is not your responsibility you might care for them you might love them you might want the best for them but you have to look after yourself first and foremost. I was fortunate. When I confronted my gambling addiction, my wife supported me. She was angry. And there was a lot of horrible, horrible conversations that we had to have where I felt about that big. But we had to have those conversations in order to try and start rebuilding trust. And that trust is rebuilding. But I still appreciate that it's not as solid as it once was. And I also appreciate that, that trust is fragile. It sounds like you've had your trust broken too many times and on a completely practical level like i say you need to take whatever steps you can now to protect yourself i can't give great advice when it comes to your finances or to your legal position but seek advice be honest make sure that your partner is being honest with anyone you speak to if you want to forgive them if you want to help them then that's fine but do it in a way that is protecting yourself first in the uk i don't know if you're uk based then there is a service i believe called uh, gamma non um not to be confused with gamblers anonymous but gamma non i believe is to help support and protect the partners or those closest to recovering or addicted gamblers and so do some research but like i say the primary thing you have to do is to protect yourself Okay, and I appreciate there's going to be a huge amount of emotional fallout. I appreciate the, you know, the the the, the hurt that you must be going through, and and the, like I say, one of the biggest things I, I I felt the worst about when it came to this was not what I'd done to myself because 
I was responsible for that. I could deal with that. And I had to deal with that. And actually, the pain and the recovery of my own situation, I kind of feel is a constant reminder, you know, of what I did. And whilst the addiction was to blame for it, it's my responsibility to fix it. What I couldn't fix was the harm I'd done to other people. So I get where you are. I understand it. And I can only understand it for, as a second party. But I, I, I get it. But from a completely practical level, what you have to do now is protect yourself. Look after yourself. And whether that means um, the, you know, the financial implications and looking after that side of your affairs. Or whether that means getting some tire, somewhere where you're going to be looked after. Where you're going to be cared for or you know whatever space you need to you just do what suits you yes it might be harmful to, to to your your husband it might you know cause their addiction to you know become even worse but that's that can't be your problem you can't allow that to be your problem i think i've rambled um but i did want to respond to this properly because it's a very very serious thing and i'm speaking from the other side of course look after yourself um you know uh, and stay safe i you know sorry to be cliche but to please just keep yourself safe and if you want to try and rebuild a relationship with your partner in the future then that has to be dealt with as a separate issue you know and that has to be dealt with through people who are far smarter far more educated and are far more qualified to talk about relationships and stuff than i am so please just first and foremost look after yourself that's it good luck Wishing you all the best. Take care.